drill down in that site, I might be able to find the product I was interested in buying. But people aren't going to spend eight hours looking on a website to find the product they're interested in buying. It's not like the good old days where if you drove to one store and they didn't have what you want, you had to go drive across town to get to another store, right? doesn't take long to go to a competitor's site where uh, the content might be more organized more efficiently. All right? So that's where we start developing your project. All right? That's where we're now we're, now we're going to transition from a more generalized discussion to uh, talking about your project specifically. So let me log into Canvas and let me look at the material about your semester project. Start out looking at the overview of the project. I know this is review because the first few week, few, for few classes I mentioned that I would like you to read this all, so I'm sure you've read this before, looking to see if people are laughing or not. All right. Um, you're going to create a small website, choose whatever topic you want. Feel free to go beyond the scope of the course. So if there's something that we haven't talked about in course that you want to explore, you're welcome to do it. There may be an opportunity to develop uh, a course, uh, a website for like a nonprofit organization or something. Uh, I'll let you know if that happens. As of now, there is not an opportunity to do that. Final project cons should consist of six to eight pages, each containing a reasonable amount of content for a web page, i.e., no is my computer on website. All right? You get to choose a topic, but there's going to be a specific methodology you're going to follow. All right. Now, the methodology is you're going to do the project in two steps. You're going to plan it, and you are going to deliver it. All right. So you're going to create a document that is the plan of what you're going to build, and then you're going to actually build the website that does that. Uh, I just read a great quote by Eisenhower. How do you spell Eisenhower? H-O-W-E-R. Plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. What do you think he meant by that? Plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. That's maddening take all the time to plan and then when it actually happens it's usually not exactly like you did it okay so that's true I think that's what he's saying is that plans are useless in that there's always going to be something you didn't think of there's always going to be maybe something's going to change and you have to change your plan um, for whatever reason any plan that you make something's liable to go and make it go wrong all right where does the second half of that quote come in, though? Planning is indispensable. It's a, uh, it's a necessary aspect of everything you do. Yeah. You should. Right. That don't count on your plans. Don't count on everything. Here, here's how I would translate that quote into uh, into something maybe that is uh, more straightforward. I would say that your plan is not going to work out exactly the way that you think it's going to. But it's still important to plan anyhow. You know, think of if you're going to go driving somewhere. You know, if you're going to go driving and you know you're going to drive to Columbus, you may chart out a plan to, that you're going to take this road and that road and that road. You get so far and you see that there's an accident or construction. Well, then you change the plan. Maybe you have to go off the highway and catch it later on or whatever. But it's still valuable to plan even though your plan might not work out exactly the way that you want it to. Same idea here. We're going to take the time to plan things. Most big things that people do work better if you plan them in advance. All right? Um, 
And this is hard, I think, for students to appreciate completely. Um, a term paper, or a paper that you have to write uh, for a class, works out much better if you take the time to plan it. What do you mean by planning it? Like maybe outline it. You know, create an outline and, and do your research, outline it, come up with an idea of what you're going to write, and then sit down and write it. As opposed to waiting till it's due and just sitting down and writing the things off the top of your head. All right? Any big job will work better if you plan it. Now keep in mind that there's benefits for planning um, for any size project. But that especially becomes important when you start talking about big projects. Projects where there are multiple people involved. The projects that we're working on in this class are small and they're one people things. You know, you know you're going to do your own semester project. But keep in mind that this is practice for you when you do have larger projects to work on and projects that involve multiple people. So uh, the bottom line is if you still don't believe the, the value of planning, humor me and go through the steps because it's worth so many points, all right? So uh, trust me that if you learn good planning skills, and this applies to all sorts of things in the IT world, not just websites. If you think of developing programs that do something, if you were going to write a program to play blackjack, you know, a lot of programmers would just want to sit down and start coding right away. That's not going to get as good results if they sat back and planned it for a minute. What classes are you going to have? What objects are you going to create? What's your UI going to look like? And so on. So all those things are forms of planning that are necessary to do. They're necessary to do for a couple reasons. First of all, they're necessary to do because a lot of people sometimes think they haven't worked out in their head what they're going to do. But a lot of times when people plan stuff in their head and don't commit it to paper, they've only about halfway thought through the problem. So they think they have enough information to go ahead and do the project where really maybe they don't have a complete grasp on the entire situation. Maybe they just have a grasp of a part of the situation. So planning and documenting the plan makes you put it on paper, makes you really think it through and think through every part, every aspect of the problem. Planning is useful because you are going to oftentimes communicate your plans to other people. All right? Maybe you're going to be working on a team of developers where some people are going to do parts of the project, other people are going to do other parts of the project. It's important to have everyone on the same page. Oftentimes you're developing a website for someone else. Like if you're a consultant, someone paid you to develop their website. Or if you work for an organization, it's your job to help them develop websites, web pages, whatever. So you want to communicate to them what the project's going to look like before you get in and start working on it, all right, and before you spend too much time. Uh, the analogy that people often give in software development is to, uh, is the analogy of building a house, all right. You wouldn't build a house without planning out how many floors it has? Is it going to have a basement? How many rooms it's going to have? Where's the bathroom going to be? Where's the kitchen going to be? And those sorts of things. You're just asking for trouble if you go in and try to do that without planning. All right? Here's an important graph. This graph is true. The shape of this graph is true for all sorts of software development, and it's been, it's been true since the first software development projects were ever created, and it will be true forever, near as I can, near as I can figure. The graph looks like this. The graph compares the cost of making a change with the stage of the project where you decide to make the change. OK? 
okay? So, in software development or web development, people typically talk about five phases of the development. They talk about the analysis, design, actually building the website, testing it, and then implementing it and maintaining it. The graph looks like this. And it makes sense. The further along that you get in the project, the more expensive it is to make a change. Think of this again, like, like building a house, right? If you're drawing, if you're working with an architect, you've just won the lottery and you're working with an architect to develop your dream house, if it's still on an architect's blueprints, and you decide that you want the kitchen to be four feet wider, it doesn't take much to change it, right? You change the drawing. It has a little bit of expense to the process because they have to go and redo some of their drawings and there'll be more materials when they build it and so on and so forth. All right? If they've started building the house, all right, or this would be actually where you're just talking about building the house. Here's where you'd be sketching it. They actually started building the house. It might not take that much more work to expand the kitchen by four feet. Compare that to when you're actually living in the house. You know, at that point you have to tear down walls and your family's going to be inconvenienced and all these sorts of problems are going to occur. So the further along that you correct a problem or make a change, the more expensive it's going to be. And it's exactly the same thing in web, de web design and web development. The bottom line for this is you want to spend as much time as you can thinking about this. Now there's a whole bunch of different strategies. Uh, those of you that are CISS majors, you'll take, uh, at the end of your program, you'll take a system development course. So I'm giving you sort of the, the five-minute description of a lot of the stuff that we cover in that class. So it does get a little more complicated here. But the idea is, is that you want to find things quickly. You don't want to spend a lot of time working on something before you find a problem. And designing it and thinking about it is really uh, critical to doing a good job developing a program or, or any kind of project. Let me end this lecture by giving a definition that I think is good about what a good website is. And we'll come back to this next week when we look at the process that I want you to go through. So if you have not read about the project, please do so before uh, next Tuesday. A good website helps the organization achieve their goals and helps the users to easily achieve their goals. If we look back at that document that I prepared, that, that we talked about in class, where we listed all the, all the things of a good website and all that, no one used the word goals, but a lot of what was said related to your goals for visiting that site. All right? 
I can easily find news stories that I'm interested in. I can easily find music that I'm interested in. I can easily find stories about sports that I'm interested in, and so far down the line. The websites that we considered bad are ones that we looked at and said, you know, if my goal was to buy a vehicle, visiting that one site didn't make my goal easy to achieve because the information wasn't organized very well. All right? So when you talk about a good website and a bad website, which is what we want, um, good websites allow the users to achieve, achieve their goals easily, and good websites um, allow the organization to achieve their goals. The design part comes in the easily part. <laughs> That's what makes, so to summarize this, you have good content on the site, and it's well designed. And then users can easily achieve their goals. Good content without well design means that it's there, but it's almost impossible to find. Good design without good content, then you look at it and say, well, this looks nice, but it does allow me to do what I want to do, and therefore is ineffective. So next time we're going to start talking about the document, the design document that you're going to prepare for your project in this class, and we're going to start by looking at the goals of the website. And we're going to look at the very first phase, and that is determining the strategy, determining the goals that this website is going to help resolve. All right, we'll see you in lab then. I will unlock the door, I'll come back to get my files, and uh, we'll be good to go.